Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm joined here by two experts, so Tam McGurney. Tam McGurney is the president and CEO, and I'm proud to say founder of Mission Valley Bank, and my good friend Michael Crane. Michael Crane is the president and co-founder of Smart Business Evolution. And I want to talk in this segment about opportunities to grow your business, because I think that's really important. And uh, Michael, I'm going to have you start off with um, business intelligence. Right. Well, what we're finding now is people are trying to find ways to supplement uh, their revenues. You know, the, the market share has kind of shrunk, and they're still trying to find a way to keep the cash flow going. And one of the unique ways that we have found and helped business owners uh, be able to create re greater revenues is through selling their business intelligence. For example, maybe uh, you're a, a plumber, you own a company, a plumbing company, uh, but you have a competitive edge because you know social media. Well, start to sell that business intelligence to other people in your same type of industry. Now, you may not want it to be in the same territory, sure. but you can still sell that business intelligence. I, I love that, and mm -hmm. I've been traveling the state doing speeches on mortgage marketing, being in the mortgage industry, and I think that's critical that you're able to reach out. So critical on business intel or selling intelligence, I love that. I think now is the best time to invest in real estate if you're renting right now. Absolutely. If you're renting or leasing your building, mm -hmm. tell me about that and financing with, yeah. with real estate. Well, I think those that were able to or fortunate enough to hold on to some cash through the last uh, cycle that we, or this cycle that we're experiencing have really had a leg up on a lot of us, and you're seeing seeing a lot of real estate acquisition activity. But certainly, if you can find a way to sit down with your banker and and uh, craft a financing program that will help you get into a building. A lot of small businesses that have a growth opportunity now and they're renting, they can buy the building they're in or, or a building a little larger that will help them grow uh, over the next uh, cycle. And you know, form an LLC, uh, lease the, comp the business, uh, will lease the building back and they right. make revenue that way. And there are programs, uh, SBA 7A and 504 programs, uh, depending upon the characteristics, low down payment if you don't have the cash up front, 90% financing. 10% down on uh, a million dollar building. Right. may seem like a lot, $100,000, but right. maybe you go in with a few partners. Right. That is absolutely brilliant. And values have come down on, oh, uh, on buildings. Interest rates are low. And banks still have money to lend. Banks have money to lend. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Let's talk about change opportunities and when, when businesses have to make that change. Right. Well, you know, there's a natural life cycle for most businesses, normally about five to seven years. As you'll see a business, they take off and they get some momentum going, but then they'll plateau and either one or two things is going to happen. They're either going to die out and won't stay competitive, or what they're going to do is they're going to get an influx of capital and be able to take off again. And of course, mm -hmm. that's exactly what you do. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Talk about capital. Um, I know you have some inspiring stories where people I uh, have taken a small business, a family-owned mm -hmm. business. Tell us that story. Uh, a couple of them that come to mind. One is uh, a young man came to us several years back that had been working since he was in his late teens for a company in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, it was a family-owned business. The owner was looking to retire. It didn't have an exit strategy, no family to bring through in terms of a su uh, succession. And this young man had demonstrated the capacity. He wanted to see him have that opportunity. He was turned down by a number of banks and ultimately ended up coming to us and we were able to sit down with the business owner and this young man and craft a program with the assistance of, of the owner staying in the business and offering his guidance and support over a period of time that gave us the comfort level that he could carry it on. And uh, just a structure that was a little bit unique but it worked for all of them and we were comfortable with it so it was a win-win. And that's been several years ago. He has now probably doubled the size of that business and uh, added to his family and mm -hmm. built a nice home and mm -hmm. the, you know, the American dream success story. Yeah, and it's that hard work. The other thing is it's this, uh, the new set of eyes, that entrepreneur that comes in. Maybe you have a business owner who's done it a certain way for so long, right. very successful, has that, that uh, you called it, business intelligence right. mm -hmm. um, to carry on, that mentorship. I think we've talked about that in previous shows. Of, but we're ready to retire. And right. that new individual's coming in with that enthusiasm to go after a different market mm -hmm. or, or go after uh, an additional market, maybe that the other owner wasn't quite interested in doing because right. they, they didn't want to kill themselves. You know, they've been doing it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. Also, you might have a good product, right? And look at to franchise. Absolutely. Um, we did actually do a, a startup financing. It's not something we do a lot of because we see some business plans that 
really aren't, uh, d banks don't typically have an appetite for mm -hmm. because maybe they need an equity partner and not a bank and at some point down the road a bank uh, might be more appropriate but we had one that just had nailed a business plan uh, several years ago and we helped with startup financing that again the family had to come to the table and say you know we need some skin in the game we need everybody mm -hmm. this can't be financed by the bank we mm -hmm. can't be the first one uh, at the loss position if it doesn't go as planned but it did go as planned and uh, this uh, young couple started off uh, one store and ultimately grew to several and started franchising and kind of watched that growth with a lot of pride to say, um, you know, they're not a full banking client of ours anymore because they're internationally franchising now. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, but that's kind of where you feel like we were we not there in the beginning, that would never have happened. And yeah, that's, that. uh, mm -hmm. that's the passion a lot of folks that are in small business lending and banking and community banks have is is helping folks like that it's yeah. a lot of fun yeah it's that passion and yeah. of course you've seen through michael yeah. of them yeah. growing that and that business plan a business strategy uh tamara thank you very much for coming on the show show Absolutely. and uh the uh, email at uh, mission valley bank uh, my email address t-g-u-r-n-e-y at missionvalleybank.com Perfect. And okay. so if you have any questions, please feel free to email Tamara. Absolutely. Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and my good friend Michael, yep. Michael Crane. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Again, um, and your email, Michael. Easy enough. Just uh, send me an email at michael at smartbusinessevolution.com. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, great stuff on opportunities to grow your business. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Out of the Rough. I'm Fred Arnold. If you'd like to view this show, go to scvtv com or fredarnold.com. If you'd like to email me, my email address is fred at fredarnold.com. Until next time, make it a healthy and prosperous day, and I hope this show helps get you and your business out of the rough. Thank you.